Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review and this is the Fio R7. This is just a very unique desktop device that's kind of one part Android DAP digital audio player and one part desktop headphone DAC amplifier. And it's all kinds of weird. We're going to talk about it and it's priced at around 700 bucks. So it's not the cheapest desktop solution out there, but honestly, given the spec of this thing, I actually expected it would cost at least twice as much. So 700 bucks. I don't know, it's kind of interesting at that price. And it's just a weirdly unique concept with, I think, a lot of promise. So I wanted to figure out, honestly, can this thing replace my desktop stack? And well, maybe if not, who is this thing for? So for the past month or so, I've had this thing in my house, been living with it, listening to it, playing with it. And that's what we're gonna talk about here today. So like all my other reviews, this is a live stream. How's it going? If you're here live, if you have any questions about the R7 that I don't answer in this review, and there's a good chance because I feel they're like, there's going to be a lot of questions about this product. If you have any questions about it, stick around to the end of the review, hang out in the live chat, drop your questions there. We will have a back and forth conversation in a bit. And I will also warn you that typically my reviews of sources like these Android things get a little bit long. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to get through it quickly. But if I don't, I apologize ahead of time. Um, the other thing I'll say up front is just a shout out to File for sending this thing in for review. If you wanna check out the R7, of course, I've got it linked in the description down below. But for now, let's dive to the table and let's just start talking about the physical stuff on this. We'll talk about what comes inside the box. We'll go over the inputs and outputs and all the controls and stuff like that. Then we'll get into talking about what this thing sounds like, what uh, the functionality is like. And again, we'll kind of answer that question. Can this replace my desktop solution? And if not, who is this thing intended for? So we'll start with the box, which as you would probably imagine, it's sizable. This is a bigger box than you typically get with a file digital audio player. And that's because it's holding this thing inside of it. And I guess I haven't tilted it to the side so you see exactly how large this is, but we'll get more into talking about the physical stuff on this device in a bit. For starters, let's just talk about what comes inside the box. You get, uh, of course, a USB cable, and this is a USB-A to USB-C. That would allow you to connect this thing to your desktop computer to use it as a DAC and headphone amplifier. Um, and then it also comes with this, which is basically a stand. This one has already got another stand on it. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but it's basically a silicone stand. There's different stands that you can choose and you adhesive them on with these little adhesive strips. Um, kind of a unique solution there, huh? Um, Apart from that, yeah, I guess let's just talk about the build on this thing. So it's obviously pretty large if you're comparing it to your average Android digital audio player, right? And for comparison, here's like Fio's large, largest digital audio player, at least the largest one I've got, the uh, the M11. So yeah, it's definitely bigger than that. But compared to like your average desktop headphone amplifier, it's actually kind of compact. I mean, it's a little bit on the tall side. It's about as tall as like four pieces of well, four pieces of, of shit audio equipment stacked on top of each other. Um, but I don't know, it's got fairly compact footprint, which I think is actually kind of nice, especially if you're going to be putting this on your desktop. Um, that's pretty nice. The chassis that this thing is in, it appears to be kind of all made out of an aluminum, including these grills over here on the side. Uh, and then you can see that it is framed in, well, an aluminum box. Um, but I don't know, it, it feels very solid. It's not overly heavy, but it, it, it feels solid. And like I mentioned, it's on this, um, this kind of like a rubber silicone stand. I'm gonna try and maneuver this thing around. You can see I've got it plugged into a wall. So I don't know, we'll see. There could be tragedy befalls me, but it sits on top of this rubber stand, which again, um, you can go with a flat one or an angled one. I've of course got it on the angled one. And that just means that when it sits on my desk, it angles up at me and I can read the screen though. If I'm honest, I wish that the angle was a little bit sharper because I feel like even with this angle, it's, I'm not really looking directly at the screen. I'm kind of looking at the screen top down, which I don't know, it's not ideal, but it, it gets the job done, I suppose. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know, I guess, honestly, I think what would be better, uh, in, in terms of this construction is maybe if the screen was just almost flat, um, but it's instead almost vertical and there you go. Okay. So that is the build quality. Again, it feels pretty nice. Um, let's talk about the inputs and the outputs. And we'll start with the, on the front of this device. Um, and I'll also say like up front, the input and output on this thing could be what makes or breaks it for your particular use case. So please pay attention to exactly what this thing is capable of because there's some things that you might want it to do that it's not capable of. 
but as it is, obviously it, it, it can do quite a bit. So what you have on the front are, of course, uh, your audio plugs. Let's see if I punch it on that. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, here you've actually got a full size 6.3 millimeter headphone jack, single ended headphone jack, and it comes with a 6.3 to 3.5 millimeter adapter. So you can use it on most headphones. Um, here you've actually got a balanced 4.4 millimeter adapter or connector, which is pretty cool. And then here you've got a full size XLR balanced output for obviously for, for using, you know, full size headphones with XLR cables. I'll be honest, I actually don't really have any. I mean, I have like one XLR cable, but I don't really use it because I haven't before now had sources that even used XLR. Um, it's not a total rarity, but usually you have to go out of your way to get like balanced headphone um, and amps and stuff like that. And it's kind of cool that this thing just does it, right? That's what's on the front. Let's, um, Let's gingerly turn this thing around. I'm gonna set a screen down, don't cringe too hard. Uh, and we'll take a look at what we have here on the back of this device, all right? And again, we'll start with what's on the outputs um, because that's fairly straightforward. You've got a couple of line outs so you could run this thing to a set of speakers. Um, this would be for your, you know, single ended speakers, but it's also got a pair, it's got a line out for a balance speaker set, which is actually pretty cool because I've got a couple of desktop speakers that could take a balanced input, but because I don't have a balanced desktop solution before now, I haven't been using that, but that is here instead. Um, so yeah, plenty of output options, um, but then there's also, of course, gonna be, you know, inputs is what you get here on the back. Um, and you've got a USB-C input here. Oh, I've just moved it off screen. You can see this is quite large. I've got USB-C, a USB-A USB input. You've got optical in, you've actually got optical out and coax out. So these are both sort of digital connectors. And that's all pretty cool, but maybe the one thing that, that's missing on this device that I would like to see, and, I, and this is not a make or break thing for me, but it would be a nice to have, would be an analog input. That's kind of like the one thing that I feel like this, this input and output is missing, is it doesn't have a way to run an analog signal into it. And the way that I would typically use that is I just have a, a disc man, a CD player that I connect via a, a RCA a, a analog input into my current desktop solution. And I'd love to be able to patch that into this thing and you know, play around with it, be able to switch to that source. But unfortunately, um, that option is not there. I guess I will call out also one other thing that is here. Uh, we didn't talk about it and it's this. It is a full size SD card. It's actually, it comes with an SD, a micro SD to full size SD adapter. I'm not sure exactly why they chose to do that, but you can plug in a, a, a full size or a micro SD card in there and obviously load that up with your own music because this thing is an Android device and it'll play music directly from the memory card, which is frankly, primarily how I use this thing. All right, so that covers the inputs and the outputs. Let's now talk about the controls, which are here on the front and well, this will be fairly simple. Um, obviously you've got a large touch screen here on the front, right? This is full Android and we're going to dig into exactly, you know, how this thing functions and stuff in a little bit, but this is, this is full Android. It is a touch screen. It's got your, your back and home buttons and stuff like that. Like this is, it's a touch screen. So <laughs> imagine all the things that you can do with that. In addition to that, of course, you've got some physical controls up here, including We'll start with a volume knob that also doubles as a power button. You can see if you press and hold it, it'll become a power knob. Um, it's You can see there are lights here on the behind the knobs and it may not be obvious here. It looks like on my camera, it's a little blown out, but they are kind of a purple magenta right now. You can actually customize the colors if you want. I think they default to blue, but feel free to pick a different color if you're choosing. And you can also completely turn them off if that's also what you prefer, but uh, it is a nice little touch nonetheless. But let's talk about how the knobs function real quick. So the, the volume knob is a digital clicky volume knob, right? This is not, um, it's not like a, a full analog pot or anything like that. It's a digital knob that has clicks and every time it clicks, I can kind of feel it, right? And then you can also see that as I'm changing the volume, you get this little display that pops up and shows you exactly what volume setting you're at, which is pretty cool. A small quibble, honestly, this is a pretty small quibble, but there's a little bit of latency in terms of when the screen updates and the, uh, the dial spins. And maybe it's not obvious to you because you're not feeling the clicks, but 
there's a little bit of a latency and you can kind of see just sometimes it's a little bit weird. Um, the other thing that, and this is more of like a, a wish, a wish how this thing worked, is you can see that it shows you what gain setting it's on, which is nice. Um, this thing actually has five different gain settings. Uh, in fact, well, I don't know if you want to look at that now. Uh, it has five different gain settings from low, medium, high, ultra high, or super high and ultra high. Uh, typically I've been leaving it at high, but um, it's nice that it shows you that. I just wish that on the screen it was maybe a little bit easier to toggle to that other um, that other uh, 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 gain setting. Um, the other thing that you've got on here, which we didn't talk about yet is this, which is an input knob, or actually, sorry, no, this is an output selector knob. Um, it allows you to easily switch between, you know, going from your headphones or, you know, these, these connectors in the front to going to pre out, which would be going out the back of the device, like to your speakers, for example, or you can actually go out to both the headphones and the speakers at the same time, which is kind of nice. And then finally, there is a fixed volume setting uh, f uh, uh, line out there that, um, you can use if you know that that's what you need, um, but then you don't get the volume control here on the device. Uh, the one thing I'll say about that is that's actually kind of cool that you can do both the, the, the headphones and the speakers at the same time. All of the desktop amplifiers that I have, you have to toggle between either the speakers going, or like the, the preamp out of the back going to my speakers or the headphone. So it's pretty cool that this device lets you listen to both at the same time, not that, I'm degenerate enough to be doing that, but I might be doing that. I don't know. It's just, you don't have to think about it, which is kind of cool. Um, notably missing here on the controls and, you know, maybe I'm just getting into wishful, wishful thinking territory, but what I would really love to see on this device is actually an input selector knob. Okay, and not just an output selector knob, right? For example, like, again, this thing has a lot of input or has a couple of different inputs in the back, a lot of digital stuff. Um, if I had this thing connected to my desktop as a DAC and headphone amplifier, and then I also wanted to go back and forth and between listening to my computer and listening to the music that I have stored on the File R7, I'd love to be able to do that with just a quick flick of a knob and switch between DAC and amplifier or whatever digital source that I've got going in here. Fortunately, uh, because there's no knob dedicated to it, you can come up here, you can swipe down, go to mode choice, and then it shows you, these are your different input options, um, just to give you a, a sense for how many different inputs this thing can select. Now, they did actually, it seemed like, the, uh, I'm pretty sure they did this with an update. They added this functionality where if I press and hold on the power button, um, if I don't hold it for a long time, it won't turn off and it'll instead will launch this screen, which lets you quickly select between your input modes. And this is actually a pretty good solution. I don't think it is as good of a solution as a knob. And frankly, this thing existing on the power button seems like somewhat of a, an acknowledgement that a knob would have been nice to have here. But I don't know, it does make it, you know, just less fiddly to switch between, right? If I wanted to go over to my DAC, um, I can just press and hold that, tap that button, and now I'm connected to my computer uh, uh, versus um, having to swipe down here, double swipe, uh, click the wrong menu <laughs> like I just did there. Um, yeah, you know, you get what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, there is that. Again, notably missing, I think. Um, the last thing I'll talk about in the controls here are uh, things that might not actually look like controls, but you see these little squares down here. These kind of look like Android touch buttons and by default, that's actually what they do. Like this will be your home button or that would be your, you know, whatever this button is uh, and that would be your back button. But you also have the option to um, make them not do that. You can turn them into playback controls, right? So for now, what I've got is I've got this button set up to become a play pause button. And that button is a track skip. And that button is a track skip back button, which is nice, but it gets into another thing of the physical controls that I wish this thing had is I wish it had dedicated playback buttons. You know, I say that all the time about daps. That's why I like to have daps. And with a device like this, well, if I'm using my desktop, as the source, it's not such a big deal because I've got playback controls on my keyboard that I'm used to using. But if I'm using this as the source, I wanna be able to toggle play and pause pretty easily. And while they, these buttons do exist, because they're not physical, you can't like feel for them and touch them. Um, they are also a little bit hard to see sometimes. It's not obvious here, but like sometimes if there's glare on the screen, right? The buttons just disappear like that is an example of. Um, 
So it, it's, again, it's a solution and it's a decent solution, kind of like the, uh, the the input switcher that they put up here, but it's not the ideal solution. And frankly, I don't know, it, it's kind of, a, it's kind of a, a big deal for me. So that is kind of the input output. That's the physical stuff in this. Now let's start talking about the, what this thing sounds like. And again, small diatribe up front. I don't spend a lot of time talking about how things sound in terms of like, expanding the sound stage or like revealing more details or being a warm source or a bright source because in my opinion pretty much all of the digital sources that i use they all sound the same to me in those regards now there are some differences that i hear between them and that's what we're going to talk about um, but it's not going to be i'm not going to say like the sound stage is better on this thing than other stuff this thing sounds very good now i'll talk about the hardware which is using actually my favorite ESS DAC, I've actually forgot the number, um, ESS 9368 or something like, there's a zero in there somewhere. Uh, it is ostensibly my favorite DAC because uh, at one point it made a good impression on me, but for the most part, I don't make a big deal about it, but it is nice that it's got a very nice high-end DAC in there. And then they also have paired it with uh, THX AAA amps, if that means anything to you. Uh, again, is, is that marketing mumbo jumbo or does that mean something very specific to you? I'll leave that up to you. I know they've got some marketing speak around it, but for me, what really matters is how powerful is it? How clean is the source? And are there weird interferences? And we'll, tar we'll start with the power, um, which on this thing is actually a lot of power, as you might expect for something this chunky, right? Your average digital audio player will have, you know, a single ended output power of maybe 200 milliwatts and a balanced output of maybe 600 milliwatts. Well, this thing on single ended is outputting 1250 milliwatts of power at 32 ohms. Um, obviously, if you're using higher impedance headphones, that output is going to come down a little bit. But I think 32 ohms is kind of like the standard uh, uh, way of comparing these devices across each other. Um, on balance connector, it's actually got 3,600 milliwatts of power or 3.6 watts, however you want to describe that. Basically, this thing is just got gobs more power than this audio player here that I've got, which is already in it of itself, like more powerful than I need for any of my headphones. So I, I don't know, maybe connecting this. I don't know. I didn't actually try connecting this to like an unpowered speaker to see if it was able to power that four watts is is a little bit low or 3.6 watts is a little bit low on that but maybe you could get away with that but i think mostly this thing is really kind of targeted at powering headphones and 3.6 watts of power i i don't are there headphones out there that require more power than that i i frankly would be surprised um i use something like sennheiser hd 600 is a headphone for me that is uh, 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 kind of my go-to. It's not, it's not like the hardest headphone to drive, but it's like the hardest headphone to drive that most people use. And it has, it has zero problem on this, but also because it's got five levels of gain, you can really like control that power. And like, I'm, if I'm using this thing to listen to IMs, I can go down into low gain and still have plenty of action on the volume knob without blowing my eardrums out because I'm using 3,600 milliwatts of power. Okay, so power's good, no no problems there. Let's talk about the noise floor because that's usually kind of the trade-off with power, especially in portable devices, is the more powerful you make the device, usually the louder you'll make the noise floor, which noise floor for most people, it's just gonna come across as a kind of a background hissing sound, like I don't know if you remember tapes from the 90s, nobody, just me. Um, but yeah, that's basically what noise floor is, like just kind of a background low level sound that's just constantly playing. and Unfortunately, here on the, the file R7, I would say that the noise floor is decent, but it didn't really do great at my test. So here's my test, all right? I've got the Campfire Audio Aura, and this, this device right here is just overkill for the Campfire Aura because this is one of the most sensitive IMs that I've got or that I've, I've ever tried. And uh, yeah, it... It needs no power in order to run these things. But if I connect it to the R7, um, I can pick up a pretty audible hiss, uh, even on the 3.5 millimeter connector. It's ignorable though. I, I could live with it. That didn't bother me too much. However, I will say on the balanced 4.4 millimeter connector, which is what I've got connected to this cur con currently, that's the word, uh, the hiss, I would say, is at the point that I don't like it. Okay, I would not listen to my Campfire Aura on balance on this device. But that's a fairly niche thing because for me, I, I tend to not, I tend to gravitate more toward the 3.5 millimeter anyway. 
but if you're looking to listen to a really sensitive I am on your and you're dead set on using a balance connector, I don't think the R7 is the best solution there because the noise floor is pretty, it is pretty audible. Um, what this thing now does really well though is going to be in terms of interferences and um, this is a thing that uh, you'll, you'll, it'll come into play sometimes with digital audio players like this one. This one actually does a good job, but other audio players like it. If you are, you know, using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi um, and listening to music, sometimes you can hear weird digital interferences come through. Or even if you're just like scrolling the screen fast and the processors work in double time, you can sometimes hear interferences. Now, thankfully here with the File R7, I heard absolutely none, even on, and again, the, the Campfire Aura is my go-to benchmark for that. So if I can't hear it on the Aura, I'm pretty sure those interferences don't exist. And honestly, it's somewhat expected because the chassis here that it's inside of is so large, they can. I didn't take it apart to see exactly how far they've separated things, but there's plenty of room there to move, you know, uh, Wi-Fi radios away from uh, crucial sound equipment like that. So uh, there, there's no reason, there's no excuse to have um, those kinds of interferences. And again, thankfully here on the R7, well, we don't have them. Um, I guess the last thing that I'll mention about the sound on this device, and this is pretty minor, um, but I'll mention it, is that the, when the amps in this device turn on and off, there is an audible click on it. Let's see if I can even, I'm gonna do it. You're probably not gonna hear it on the camera, but when I hit play, there's a small little click there. And that's basically just the amplifier turning on. And then if I turn, if I stop playing for about, I don't know, 10, 30 seconds, I forget exactly, it'll turn itself off. Um, the only thing that I'll mention about that, I don't think the click's gonna bother anybody, but the only thing I will mention is that it does take about a half a second for the amplifier to turn on, but the music has started playing before then. So when you are waking this device from, you haven't been using it, um, you hit play, you might miss the first beat of the song. But that's only gonna be the first beat of the first song, because once the amplifier's on, you're not gonna have it. And it's turned itself off again, just to kind of give you a sense of how quickly it'll turn, turn itself off. Again. And then there you go, now it's back on. Um, all right, that is everything I can talk about the sound. Well, let's start talking about the functionality on this device. And I'm actually gonna keep the Android section pretty brief because if you are familiar with an, a Fio DAP, right? This is basically exactly the same experience as using Android on a Fio DAP, which is generally a very good experience in my opinion. Opinion. Um, it's using Android 10, so it's not the latest Android, but it is modern enough that all of the apps that I've been looking for run no problem. Uh, and it's fully customizable. I didn't run in, into any limitations. Uh, and the way that I like to customize my Android devices is I like to use Niagara Launcher, which is the launcher that I have here. It's just nice and simple and sleek. Um, I don't know. The, I could get away with other other launchers and if you like your own personal launcher it should work no problem here i also like to use power amp which is the app that i've been showing here um, rather than the stock file app the stock file app is decent but it's not my favorite um, and because it's android of course you can customize it however you want it does have full access to the google play store as you can see um, so honestly if you wanted to play minecraft on your file r7 your desktop amplifier I think you could. I didn't actually try it, but I'm pretty sure that would work. But yeah, if you want more detail about the, the file app or the Android functionality, honestly, I would go back and check out my file M11S review or my file M11 Plus review. It's basically the exact same experience. It is just full, complete, and total Android here. Um, maybe the only difference here is that there's like a screensaver that turns on um, on this device because ostensibly you're just kind of leaving this thing on all the time and the screen isn't powering off the way that, you know, an Android device, an Android phone needs to in order to preserve battery life. Now, let's get into talking about what, how, how well this thing serves my particular needs, okay? And, and maybe what are some things that I think it could use in order to actually replace my desktop setup. Because as much as I actually, I think this is a pretty cool device and very original and I think it looks nice, sounds good. It's got some interesting functionality. I don't think for me, it's actually going to replace my desktop solution. And, and let's talk about why. Now it might still for you, but I'll talk about why for me, okay? Um, 
For me, an analog input honestly would be pretty nice. I would say that's kind of a nice to have because I do have my Discman, my, my CD player that I'd like to connect to my audio system that plays through both my speakers and my headphones. And if I were to switch over to this device, I would have to give that up because there's no analog input on this thing. Yeah, it's, uh, I could probably make or break it with that one. The USB input on this thing is probably more where I think it's, I think it's frankly just not, it's not quite good enough, right? So as I mentioned before, you have to switch between um, listening to the Android, you know, the Android source of this or listening to your computer, um, either via uh, this drop down menu or this little shortcut here to switch over into DAC mode. Again, if that was a knob, I think that would make just a big difference in terms of like how easy and like seamless and like, I just do it, right? The way that I, I turn my, my my amplifier from headphones to speakers right now, it's just a simple press of a button and I like that. Here it's just a little bit fiddly to the point that, you know, there's a little bit of resistance there and eh, I might not do it. So um, that is one thing, but I think maybe the bigger issue, well, definitely the bigger issue for me, is that there's latency when using this thing as a DAC for my computer. And what's interesting is that the latency seemed kind of variable. Like the first time I used it, it was very noticeable. And then as I was preparing for this review this morning, I plugged in my computer again. And I was like, oh, the latency is actually not bad. I was watching a YouTube video, I was watching some MKBHD. And the there was a noticeable latency on it, but it was perfectly viewable. If you're just listening to music, the latency doesn't matter at all. I'll be honest right there. But anything else that I'm using a computer for, the latency is kind of a problem. And when it was at its best, it was, I would say, acceptable. But unfortunately, it got worse again. And I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, it goes from, you know, I would say probably around like 100 milliseconds of latency at its best to at its worst, it's probably close to like 400, 500 milliseconds of latency. And if you're not used to counting time in milliseconds, it's it's a significant amount of time, okay? Um, and for me, I, I, it's, it's a big enough issue that that would kind of prevent me from really wanting to use this device. Um, three, what's the, what's the next thing is, I, I really do think that it needs physical buttons for managing playback, right? If I'm gonna be using the Android uh, source or the Android interface to play music, which is, you know, kind of the point, I think. I want physical playback buttons, whether it be like kind of on top of the device or on phone device, I don't know. I want to be able to easily toggle play and pause. And maybe, maybe they can add that as like a shortcut in there. I don't know. But nonetheless, it's not here right now. Um, and I, I would really like that because if I'm listening to music on my computer, I'm definitely going to be using my keyboard shortcuts to toggle play and pause rather than having to navigate to the application that's playing the music and then find the play button and click on it. I need a physical button. And I really do think that the R7 would be better with that. And then the last thing that I think this device could use, I, again, for me, not a requirement, but what I really do think this product could use that would make it a lot more useful, not just for me, but for anybody else using a product like this is system-wide EQ. There is none. There is like a 10 band EQ inside of the file app and it's Android. So ostensibly you can download a system-wide EQ application and use it, but I didn't do that. Maybe I should have, um, but I don't, what really needs to happen is, is, is this device be sort of like an EQ hub that works with Android as a source or works with the digital input sources as well. And I think, if that had like a really nice parametric EQ application, that would make this just kind of a killer product to put on your desktop, right? And it's it's very possible. It's all Android. It's very, very possible. File, if you're looking for how to make the R8 better, that would be my advice. It's to give this thing system-wide parametric EQ that works over Android, Android source, works over the digital input sources, including, you know, USB for my computer, maybe even over analog sources that would maybe that's going too far maybe that's asking for too much but there you go so all those things combined i don't know for me it's not replacing my my desktop setup right and my desktop setup is nothing special it's just a a shit modi 3 dac going into a drop thx AAA amplifier um, and it would be cool to replace it with this device um, but for me it's not going to do it that said who do I think this device makes sense for? Because while it might not work for my particular uses, 
I still think it's pretty cool. I think it's got some unique use cases. And I honestly think that the use cases for this thing, the best use cases are not attached to a computer, not as a desktop solution. I think this kind of makes more sense as a standalone unit. Um, for example, if you needed to, if you wanted to set up like a listening station in your living room or maybe buy your nightstand in your bed or something like that, and you don't want to have a computer there and maybe you don't want to have a DAP that you have to charge all the time. Well, here's an option. You could just have this thing in Android mode and use this thing as an Android DAP. Again, I do wish it had physical playback, playback controls, but I can get over that because I think it is pretty unique as that sort of listening station setup. Um, and Maybe to that end, another use case, this is probably not for most people here, but if you're having like a headphone demo station, either maybe you have friends come over and you just like to show them your stuff, or maybe you are at Can Jam, an audio show, or a retailer, and you want a device set up that's got music playback on it and good quality music playback that can doesn't need to be connected to a computer. Well, this thing can absolutely do that. And again, it's gonna be able to power all of your headphones. Um, but that might be somewhat of a niche use case. So that's gonna bring us into this conclusion. I pulled this up, that was dangerous because this cable's still attached, but uh, I'm gonna give it a score. Out of five stars, I think the File R7 is a really interesting, unique product. It's worth three stars. It does what it does actually very well. Unfortunately for me, the things where it overlaps with my needs, I still just prefer using a digital audio player. But that said, if this fits your needs, better than mine, well, I've got a link in the description down below where you can check it out. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, and why not? Go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and I'll catch you on the next super review, or you can join the Discord server, which I've also got linked in the description. I'm there all day, every day, probably way too much. And we've got some good folks there talking about audio, answering questions and um, having a good time in between reviews. But um, yeah, if you're not here live, I'll catch you on the next super review. If you, you are here live now, let's hang out and let's have a chat. Have a good one.